Hey, what is up, guys? I uh, want to bring you a piece today uh, that was originally shared on a radio personality named D. Lee, his, uh, his station, the D. Lee Morning Show. Um, he runs out of Philadelphia's Power 99 FM, or if you listen in St. Louis, is 100.3 FM. Uh, the piece was given to him by an unknown author, he says, uh, who wrote a letter giving their perspective of black people. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of narrate this. Um, and and let you hear it. Uh, this is basically perspective whites on on black America. Um, it may be hard to listen to for some, but you need to hear it. It says it starts off, blacks don't read. This is very deep and unfortunately very true. They are still our slaves. We can continue to reap the profits from the blacks without the effort of physical slavery. Look at the current methods of containment that they use on themselves. Ignorance, greed, and selfishness. Their ignorance is the primary weapon of containment. A great man once said the best way to hide something from a black, uh, from black people is to put it in a book. We live now in the information age. They have gained the opportunity to read any book on any subject through the efforts of their fight for freedom, yet they refuse to read. There are numerous books readily available at Borders, Barnes & Nobles, and Amazon.com, not to mention their own black bookstores that provide solid blueprints to reach economic equality, which should have been given, uh, which should have been their fight all along, but few read consistently, if at all. Greed. Greed is another powerful weapon of containment. Blacks, since the abolition of slavery, have had, large amounts of, have had large amounts of money at their disposal. Last year, they spent $10 billion during Christmas alone out of their $450, uh, $450 billion in total yearly income, which equals 2.22%. Any of us, uh, it says, any of us can use them as our target market for any business venture we care to dream up. No matter how outlandish, they will buy into it. Being primarily a consumer people, they function totally by greed. They continually want more with little thought for saving or investing. They would rather buy a new, uh, a new pair of sneakers than invest in starting a business. Some even neglect their own children to have the latest Tommy or FUBU. And they still think that having a Mercedes Benz and a big house gives status or that they have achieved the American dream. They are fools. The vast majority of their people are still in poverty because the greed holds them back from collectively making better communities. With the help of BET and the rest of the black media that uh, often broadcast destructive images into their own homes, we still continue to see huge profits like those from Tommy, Hilfiger, and Nike. Um, they'll continue to show off to each other while we build solid communities with the profits from our businesses that we market to them. Selfishness. I try not to mess. Ingrained in their minds through slavery, is one of the major ways we can continue to contain them. One of their own, um, Du Bois, said that there was an uh, innate division in the culture. A talented tenth, he called it. He was correct in his, de uh, in his deduction that there are segments of their culture that has, that has achieved some, that have achieved some form of success. However, the segment missed the fullness of his work. They didn't read the talented tenth uh, was responsible to aid the non-talented 90%, in achieving a better life. Instead, the segment has created another class, a boopy class, a uh, class that looks down on their people or aids them in, con in, con in a condescending manner. They will never achieve what we have as white people. Their selfishness does not allow them to be able to work together on any project or endeavor of substance. When they, uh, when they do get together, their selfishness lets their egos get in the way of their goal. Their so-called help organizations seem to only want to promote their name without making any real changes in their community. They are content to sit in conferences, conventions, in our hotels and talk about what they will do while they uh, award play, uh, plaques to the best speakers, not for the best doers. Is there no end to their selfishness? They steadfastly refuse to see that together each, each, uh, together each achieves more uh, as a team. They do not understand that they are no better than each other because of what they own. In fact, most of them, uh, most of those boopies are but one uh, or two paychecks away from poverty, all of which is under the control of our pens and our offices 
uh, and our uh, boardrooms. Yes. We'll, uh, yes. We will contain them as long as they refuse to read, continue to buy anything they want, and keep thinking they are helping, quote unquote, their communities by paying dues to the organizations which do little other than hold lavish conventions in our hotels that we own. By the way, don't worry about any of them reading this letter. Remember, they don't read. Now, a lot of people will say uh, this is like a hypocrisy. It doesn't, you know, this is crazy. Um, I look at this and I think that it is actually pretty damn accurate uh, when you look at the black community. And I, I would have to say again that um, when white people established slavery, they established this as ongoing way of life. Slavery was not meant to be ended. They didn't want it to end. It was not something that was supposed to, to, uh, to happen. It was such a, a, a good thing um, how they were able to jumpstart this country after leaving you know, the hands of the Brits and, uh, and being able to really become you know, a, a, a solid fighting force, a solid nation uh, that could withstand the pressures of Britain at the time, which were huge. And so slavery offered them the best way to achieve what they wanted. So we weren't thought of as people to begin with. We weren't even thought of as a real, the only commodity that we were was labor. And that's all they saw us was. Uh, that's how they saw us. Now, in, in conjunction with this letter, I would like to state that all those people that, you know, praise, uh, that gave praise to, uh, to President Abraham Lincoln, um, in this time for, uh, you know, for ending slavery, um, they don't really understand what happened and why we were uh, inevitably emancipated. Um, it, it was a lot more than, uh, than what they taught us. He didn't really care about slaves, and when I mean slaves, he didn't really care about black people. Um, he saw it in an entirely different light. He was a very smart man. He was very honest. That's why they call him Honest Abe. And I want to read a letter um, that he wrote to Horace Greeley. And um, this was during the height of the Civil War. Um, one of his most famous letters, obviously. Um, in a reply to uh, when he wrote a draft of the Emancipation Proclamation um, and wanted to get... You know, he wanted this letter was in response to uh, the draft that he had given the New York Tribune, and uh, they just wanted to follow up and basically, you know, say, "Is this what you really want to say?" Um, so, this was the letter. I want to go ahead and read to you. This was to uh, Horace Greeley um, from the Executive Mansion, Washington, uh, on August twenty second, eighteen sixty two. It says, "Dear Sir." I have just read yours uh your I have just read yours, which is the response of the nineteenth addressed to myself through the New York Tribune if there be uh if there be in it any statements or assumptions of fact which I may know which I may know to be erroneous, I do not know and here uh controvert them uh, I do not now or here controvert them. If there be in it any inferences which I may believe to be falsely drawn, I do not now and here argue against them. If there be uh, perceptible in it any impatient or dictatorial tone, I waive it in a difference, in a difference to an old friend. To a def uh, deference, I waive it in a deference to an old friend whose heart I have always supposed to be. Uh, whose heart I have always supposed to be right. They talked weird. As to the policy uh, I seem to be pursuing, as you say, I have not meant to leave anyone in doubt. I would save the Union. I would save it in the shortest way under the Constitution. The sooner the national authority can be restored, the nearer the Union uh, will be the Union as it was. If there be those who would not save the Union unless they could, uh, could at the same time save slavery, I do not agree with them. If there are those who would not save the Union unless they could at the same time destroy slavery, I do not agree with them. 
My paramount objective in this struggle is to save the Union and is not either to save or to destroy slavery. If I could save the Union without freeing any slave, I would do it. And if I could save it by freeing all the slaves, I would do it. And if I could save it by freeing someone and leaving others alone, I would also do that. What I do about slavery and the colored race, I do because I believe it helps to save the Union. And what I forbear, I forbear because I do not believe it would help to save the Union. I shall do less whenever I shall believe what I am doing hurts the cause, and I shall do more whenever I shall believe doing more will help the cause. I shall try to correct errors when shown to be errors, and I shall adopt new views as fast as they shall appear to be true views. I here stated, I have here stated my purpose according to the, my view of official duty, and I intend no modification of my oft expressed personal wish that all men everywhere could be free. Yours, Abraham Lincoln. Now, I wanted to read that just because, like I said, uh, Abraham Lincoln cared about the Union. He didn't really care about slavery or, or black people um, at the time. He wanted to preserve the Union because he knew that the Union ultimately is what would have broken the country uh, and given rule back to Europe, uh, who which would then come back and take all the colonies and states that we had already gathered and divide them amongst themselves. And in essence, we would be, you know, a European, the extent, the extended, uh, you know, departure of a European union, um, just here in North America. So he knew that the union had to be, uh, had to continue to exist uh, in totality. And so he also knew that slavery at the time was on its way out and that we could not stand as a country if we decided to keep slavery um, still around. So he had to do something about it, and that was ultimately uh, to keep the Union in, as a whole. So it wasn't because he felt bad for slaves or felt bad for black people. It was because it was going to save the Union. That's all he cared about. And he was honest about it. So um, back to the very first letter, uh, it's a lot of truth in it a lot of truth in it, but uh, what you have to see is that part of the blame is on black people. The condition that we still are in today, part of it is still to blame. Uh, in a way, white people have kind of abs absolved themselves uh, from the responsibility of what they have created. Um, they knew once slavery was, was done and over with, and that when uh, blacks wanted rights, uh, they would have to treat us as people. They never once cared about us being equal or, or, or thereof. So for them, they, like I said, they absolved themselves from the responsibility of what they had created. They created a monster because, like I said, when we weren't considered people, um, they, they had a use for us. Once they abolished slavery and they could no longer use us, we were a useless lump of material that they could no longer benefit from. But when you're dealing with people, you're now dealing with a, a problem of population growth. We were taught to breed like animals because that's how they treated us. All the things that they put into making us a slave it's kind of like they just got up one day and said, you know what, we're not coming back. Like if you just leave a job, they just left us there. They didn't do anything to reverse what they had done because they didn't care. And so when you leave an illiterate lot of people to wallow in destitute situations, you take a slave and you say, well, you've depended on me, slave, for everything that you've ever, for your entire existence. And now we have no more use for you. So you're on your own. That's what they did. And so the situation 
of how we ended up from 1862 to now, it's been a very, very slow progress for black people to, to be or to, uh, to be an equal member of society. We were completely destroyed as a people, and this is how we've come. This is how far we've come. Uh, but at the same time, this is how far white people have come to how they see us. They still see us as inferior, as slaves. And by our actions, we really haven't progressed that much in our actions as a people um, to, to warrant that, that want to be an equal in society. And this letter uh, basically states that. It states how people see us by our actions. What do we do as black people to change that? So a lot of people will read this letter and say, you know what, full of shit, blah, blah, blah. But no, it, it's really got a lot of merit to it. This is how the community acts. There are a lot of people that don't want to be educated, a lot of people that only care about status and things and believe that that's what elevates them above the others. Instead of helping each other, they'd rather be above everyone else. Say, look, this is what I got. I made it. What about y'all? So uh, when, when, when you see people um, given to these charities and stuff like that, it's like we don't have the capacity to, to, to really figure out how money works, how to actually bring up our community. Uh, we think that, you know, donating to a charity or buying some turkeys, like David Banner said, and, you know, buying some damn toys for, uh, you know, for Christmas, you know, to, to, to help kids, uh, you know, and stuff like that in the hood and doing all these things actually help people, but it's temporary uh, insanity is what I call it. It doesn't really help. How do you, how about you, you, you dedicate yourself like, like a LeBron James, like dedicate yourself to actually doing something that's going to help the community. How about we uh, donate to build better schools? How about we, you know, you know, we, we offer playgrounds and, 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 uh, and youth sports and, you know, and stuff like that. Things that will actually help people, um, help people in, in the long run and actually really have a positive impact on people. Buying toys for kids or buying turkeys for, for Thanksgiving, that stuff doesn't really help. It's good, but it doesn't help uh, bring your people up from the destitute situations that they're in. So um, hopefully you enjoyed this. Uh, like I said, I felt like it needed to be said, and I want to hear what you guys think about it. And I know it's been a long video, but if you listen to all of it, thank you. Uh, make sure you leave your comments below. Make sure you follow, like, and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys.